uh, article that's coming up is uh, a change in uh, pace. The last few articles have been a bit polit political and we're getting back to archaeology. So I thought I'd go the full hog and do something. I wrote a little couple of months ago. We had a bit of a backlog recently. And it relates to dingoes and Denisovans. And it was uh, two papers Evan gave me, both of which were sort of mainstream articles on both of them. But what struck me was that in both cases, Australia, in one case, with the dingoes, was obviously mentioned a lot, and the other case was mentioned in one sentence. In both cases, the one thing the papers shared is they didn't make sense. And no one seemed to see that. And with the dingoes, the problem with dingoes is they've been genetically analysed by Sydney Uni, and they found they don't believe relate genetically to any other dog, or canine, or wolf, or anything. And it caused a lot of problems, and it still does to this day, because they can't work out what that all means, because the genetics in Australia doesn't seem to fit. And what you're going to find in this article is we look at that, and we also look at the part of this that people don't look at. So we go and look at three dreaming stories and try and sort out what the real truth is. A novel idea. Since they all said they couldn't work out what it meant, well, then go and ask the people here with the dingo, and I'll give you a better clue. And that's what we did. And the second part relates to a paper on the Denisovans. And here, it's got a fascinating premise behind it. And this guy says that around 300,000 years ago, there were 10 different type species, nine species of hominid. Well, it's actually 10, since he's written it. They found another one. Anyway, his premise is that why is it the Homo sapiens actually did prevailed over all of these other ones and it was simply because of one thing and it's really obvious throughout the whole article is because we were more aggressive more innately violent deceptive manipulative all words that have been used by the way and we beat them we beat them into a pulp not because of nasty not because we had reason it's because just just the way we are then and we still are to this day and that's the premise behind the whole of this article well, we think there's a completely different story behind it, but um, you'd have to read that one to check on it. But honestly, all I've got to say, if that's the case, and that is the truth about humanity, and that's how we are, and he says we still are to this day, then maybe it's time for the um, Earth to clean itself up, because it doesn't sound like we turned out that well. But I think that's to do with the mindset and the conditioning, where people are forced into these deceptions and these lies and these misunderstandings when there's a better way of doing things. Now, this brings me to the second part of um, what this presentation is about this time around. Apart from the article, uh, we're going back to the online conference we're doing with Barry Eaton and Mary Robble, Leah, Lee Capitelli and ourselves. The second part of our presentation on our alien ancestry, what comes next. And again, I want to remind people you don't need to have seen the first one to pick up on the second one. And secondly, for those people who saw the first one, no one's repeating anything. We are repeating the prophecy and we're adding to it. And we're going back to completing the reading of the Carry On Glyphs. And more importantly than that, updating on something that is quite dramatic that has taken place. Now, you may be aware of the fact that in Australia right now, blowing up sacred sites and destroying them has become a, a pastime of many different groups. And that has happened at Yukon Gorge, it's happening in Canberra, it's happening at Warrigamble Gamble with the human bones are going to be, and burial sites are going to be flooded, it's happening at Carry On. And we've written an article about that, mentioned that last time. We've written a complete article. We were approached by the people defending that site, and we put up an article, which was a compromise to try and resolve some issues there. But I want to make the point, with hun within hundreds of metres of a proposed 70 house block residential subdivision, suburban subdivision, some of these houses get will go directly within hundreds of metres of the Carry On Glyphs, of a star platform of 800 star markers, of which we've marked out around about 400. 
of the oldest star platform on the planet, which was dated by Sydney Uni at 4,600 years, that has already been damaged, matted, pieces dug out already. I've, of course, the carry on glyphs of quite a few other sites that I want to go into now, and one in particular I am going to mention, that will all be open to access, and it's not protected. There's no signs up, just access for people wandering in. Now, the place is being trashed as it is with people coming in, but throwing more people into a place that's already under stress is like throwing petrol under fire. Now, we've written up a compromise where we're going to suggest, and look, read the article because we've just written it before there, but the important part is not, don't even read the article, do this for us. We, we've got a way, we feel, of lobbying the authority so this doesn't happen not that we don't want this development i understand what they're on about there i understand why they want that and we're just saying scale it down and then have a ranger as part of this deal and guides to take people in and take them back out escorted with signs going up saying you don't go in unless you've been escorted that will work all that stuff is in the uh, proposal we've put up now what i'm asking people to do if you want because at the moment You've got to understand in Australia, you've got to understand one thing about this, that you can gorge. Eddie McPhee, the elder who asked us to come and help earlier with another site, another cave that was over 40,000 years, they wanted to blow up. And we stopped them for a while. But in this case, they didn't. But you need to understand, on Eddie's site, tribal land, there are 829 different leases, mining leases. Secondly, more importantly, when you get a mining lease, many of them have what's called exclusive rights. And you know who determines who that's between? The Minister for Aboriginal Affairs and the mining company, not the people. So what Rio Tinto did is legal because that was decided between the minister who kicked it off and them. And the original people, even when they begged three weeks before to, to take the charges away because they knew they were there, Rio said, no, no, we're not doing it. And we've had an agreement and you're not in that. Now that's the case all over Australia. Now, with Carry On, which we believe, and we'll give you more reasons why when we get there, has absolute proof of an Egyptian presence and an alien presence, and we're going to present that evidence on the presentation, on the online presence. Also, as a part of this, where we're going to ask people, explain them how they can help us lobby and try and get to save this one, because we've lost the others. And this is like a line in the sand. And I'm going to ask people, look, man, even if you don't care about what we're talking on in the day, just come along to our talk. Do that bit. Find out the information there. Find how to do that. Because we're still compiling information, what we want to do, who we want to send this to for the most effective impact. And we've worked out a structure to do it. Only takes you 10 minutes. That's all. And the point I do want to make with this presentation we're doing, it's open for seven days. And obviously, its main function is you can see it as long as you want, as many times you want over seven days, but it can't be copied. And if you think it's worthwhile, please let others know about it for two reasons. Firstly, because Carry On is now under direct threat. And secondly, more importantly, or just as importantly, this is the second part of the story about the prophecy. On December the 21st, 9pm at Uluru, when a ceremony will be given there and in one other place that changes everything and we're basing that also on that and of course i'll go into a lot more detail when we talk about that prophecy in the online conference but for now my focus is upon a place i've been to oh, at least maybe three dozen times now and while I've been there, time after time, a little bit more damage is seen, a little bit more damage is seen, and nobody cares. And the reason they don't care, believe me, I'll explain exactly why I can say this. We'll go into the reading of the glyphs this time. I didn't do that last time. We ran out of time. And then I'm going to talk about some evidence that corroborates what we're seeing there, which proves both Egyptian and non-terrestrial participation on that side and involvement on that side. So, for now, that presentation's coming up on the 12th, I think, this Sunday, and I think it's a different day in America, might be Saturday, I'm not sure, but anyway, it's all up on the time there. In the meantime, I really hope that very soon 
Oh, by the way, the good news is Rio Tinto has now decided they will be holding an investigation which they will conduct and they will release the findings sometime in October, maybe they're thinking. But oh, by the way, to begin with, I've got some more good news too on top of that. To begin with, when they were going to do this, because of confidentiality reasons, none of the report would have been released to the public. Just a summation. They would have handed it for you. But now it's been decided, because there was some pressure about that, don't know why, they're now going to strip feed selected passages to selected media outlets and then get on with business and just forget all this stuff and get back on to doing what they best, which is blowing up sites. And of course, we do know that BHP has decided for the time being to suspend the detonation of 24-odd sites they've got that they were going to blow up also. So at the moment, get, uh, only due to the grace of the fact they decided they'd do something like that, they've helped put it on hold for now. And I believe the Parliament's about to put together a committee and a subcommittee and get standing orders together to have a look at this also. So things are going particularly well around here. And in the meantime, as every day passes, we might have a huge subdivision with 70 houses, and maybe four people in a house, and then the relations and the friends deciding they want to stretch their legs and go for a walk in the bush. And can I conclude with this, the most important part of this story? There is a site there, very close to where that subdivision ends, and I can't show it to you, and I can't even describe it, because Arnie Bev and the group that had a meeting about this site decided it could not be done. We can show it to UNESCO when it gets listed as World Heritage, but not before. That's the instructions we were left with. Now, why are these instructions? Because wandering through the bush with two other people, one of whom had a film and filmed it, and we've photographed it, and there's about eight of us, so we all know exactly what it is, so I'm not lying about this. We came upon a site of, like, unlike any I'd ever seen. It was stunning and beautiful, and I can't even begin to describe what it's like, because I'll give you a clue to what it is. Never seen something before like this. Anyway, we came in that night and told Aunty Bev about this, and she looked at me and said, why aren't you dead? I sort of remember at the time thinking, oh, we found this amazing sight. And Aunty Beth basically said, drop dead. But she didn't mean it like that because she said that to the other two guys. And I remember they are, and I won't mention them now because maybe they don't want to be mentioned, but one of them's got the film, and that was Sean. And um, we showed it to him, we talked about it, it was agreed. She says it's the most important women's sight in Australia. Now, there are other people in that room, and I'll back that up. They know who they are. We all heard it. And we decided, we voted as a group. There were eight or nine that made that group decision, and we obeyed exactly what Arnie Bev said. It was amazing. I want you to think about that. You could dig up and take and carry away bits of this really easily if you saw it. And people would want to. Um, if the subdivision goes ahead as it is, and they go for a walk and they go this way instead of that way and they walk upon it and they don't know what it is A, I think it's dangerous because there are spirits there and you've got bad intent and it might explain maybe why they let us go and didn't kill us and that might be dangerous from your point of view and you may end up dying before you pick up the shovel or spade or B, you might get it out and do it and then ruin it forever and once you destroy this site you can't put it back that's a consideration about this site that's not in the developer's plans because Arnie Bev made it clear we aren't allowed to show you guys pictures of us. But I can get the stat decks from the people who are in that room with me. I know where they are and they, know, and they would not deny it either because they know it's true. And we've got film of the thing. So the carry-on thing now is as important as the prophecy right now. They're equal in this respect. So I'd ask you to come and join us and it only costs 20 Two dollars, twenty-three dollars Australian, and God knows what that means elsewhere. A lot less. And in return, it doesn't matter where you are. You can help us doing something like a public movement to stop this happening. Because we're not allowed to show anyone. We made that agreement with our elder, and you can't break that. That's the law. And we're just telling you this shouldn't happen. Okay. So until maybe Sunday for some of you, and um, I'll finish this one up now. I hope. We'll see how that goes.